At this place in history, we're on the Lake Champlain shoreline in Alberg with Steve Perkins, the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society. Steve, this location wasn't always part of Vermont, <laughs> and that concept and this physical structure are what bring us here this week. Uh, yes, Mike, a, a really kind of complex story, uh, sometimes humorous in parts, right. uh, but there, yeah, it deals with the fort over our shoulder, or, or more specifically, where that fort is located, and also where we are. We're on the uh, edge of the causeway leading on to the Rouse's Point Bridge. Uh, Rouse's Point, New York State, there was a the, the French and Indian War, the 70, uh, Seven Years' War, um, uh, which the British won, ultimately taking over all this area um, so they had to create a, a boundary at the end of that, that war where they said okay where's the the British province of Quebec versus New York or, and New England um, and the treaty that ended that war created it said the 45th parallel is going to be the northern border of New York. Now, remember, there's no Vermont at the time. A group of surveyors surveyed what they thought was the 45th parallel. Then we fought this American Revolution right. deal. It became an international border. And the U.S. government said, you know what, we need to fortify it. And it was fortified twice with one of those fortifications proving a tad bit more successful, you could say, than the other. <laughs> yes. So 1814, you know, the British came down Lake Champlain. The Battle of Plattsburgh was, was fought, and they were defeated by the American forces um, so he said we need to put a fort up here yeah. and this point of land over our shoulder I mean you can see a fort this right. is not the one I'm referring to right now but yeah. we're gonna put a fort right there makes sense because um, that's Canada yeah, we're looking at Canada right there um, and so the fortification never really had a name mm -hmm. but it came to be known as Fort Blunder it so it would they started building it in 1816 quickly ended up s stopping building because this border became disputed. They weren't um, taking into account the curvature of the earth when drawing this really long line, became a little more sophisticated by the early 19th century. And when taking that into account, they said, you know what? The border's, well, kind of where we're standing right now. Yeah. We would have been on the international border, right. which puts this new American fort in Canada. Canada. Hence Fort Blunder. We actually had to have a treaty yeah. with England which determined what this border was going to be. And part of the negotiations were, okay, we'll give you a little bit more of what later became, Ma or, or was Maine, uh, if you give us the land that that fort's on. And so in 1842, the U.S. goes ahead and builds the fort we see now, Fort Montgomery. Um, which was a state-of-the-art border protection facility. It could take hundreds of soldiers, um, at max, uh, you know, in the hundred. <laughs> um, so it was garrisoned, um, never fired a shot. The U.S. government kept it up until 1926, and then they sold it at public auction, and it has been in private hands ever since. I even remember long before I moved to this area, hearing that Fort Montgomery, whatever that was, I didn't know at the time, was on eBay, so I wanted to go check it out, and I remember seeing it there. Uh, yes, they tried to sell it on eBay. It didn't work. Um, it was just purchased. Yeah. Um, so it does have new owners. They've got grand plans for it. A bulwark against British Canada at this place in history.